Today is one week from today, and this year's ballot features some significant state and local races. And our Ethan Kibbe joins us now with a look at some of the major races and with information voters need to know before heading to the polls. Good evening, Ethan. Mike, good evening. There's a lot to talk about. Let's start with the most recent update. As of about two minutes ago, the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot passed, meaning if you didn't apply for one and you want to vote, you now must vote in person. And you should vote because the ballot features some really important races. Here's a few we're keeping our eyes on as we get ready for next Tuesday's election. Erie County Council, four out of seven seats up. That's a majority of the seats. Some of those races are really closely contested. Erie County Court, we've got a judicial race there that we're keeping an eye on. Should be a really interesting one as well. State Supreme Court, that's a huge race, and I'll tell you why. Right now, there's a Democratic majority on the court with one seat available. Now, this wouldn't flip that majority, but think about the number of cases the state Supreme Court has heard over just the last few years. Everything from election cases related to the 2020 election, abortion access, voting rights, redistricting, you name it. That's a huge race. And then, of course, Mill Creek Supervisor, keeping an eye on that one because of that Mill Creek General Authority and the plans to redevelop the area around Presque Isle. That race getting more attention than it ordinarily might. So, ahead of an important election like this, voters should make a plan, local experts say. Erie County Election Director Tanya Fernandez says, take a moment before next Tuesday and determine your polling location. Already, more than 20,000 voters have requested mail-in ballots. Most of those will come back, but if you're among the several thousand people who get one and then don't end up using it but still want to vote, the best thing to do Bring it to the polls. That way you can surrender it and vote in person. Following the proper protocol, Fernandez says, just makes for a smoother election day. If you don't want to return your ballot to the office, you can take the ballot to the polls, but you have to have the ballot along with the declaration envelope. You can surrender it and vote at the polls. If you requested a mail-in ballot and you haven't received it yet, you can go to the polls on next Tuesday, but you'll have to vote a provisional ballot. You can do the same thing, by the way, if you requested a mail-in ballot and lost it. it happens to everyone. You go prov uh, vote a provisional ballot and away you go. Now, because Election Day is so near, it's probably wiser to use the drop box outside the courthouse rather than trying to mail back a ballot in time. But if you do, remember, one person, one ballot. You've got to get a specially authorized form to drop off somebody else's ballot. Coming up on Erie News Now, it's 6. We'll tell you about another race that we're keeping an eye on. It's not a huge race, but here's the interesting hook on it. You've got the Republican and Democratic candidates working together saying, we don't care which one of us you vote for, but vote for us, not the write-in candidate. That candidate, someone who probably is familiar to Erie News Now viewers. We'll tell you all about it on Erie News Now at 6. Ethan Kibbe, Erie News Now.